Hi, we're the Weasley Sisters. This is episode 72, and I'm Naturally Nitty, a.k.a. Jessica. And I'm Alina, a.k.a. Starnets. Today is May 28, 2013. This is our weekly podcast where we talk about knitting, crochet, spinning, sewing, and everything else. And most especially, the HP KCHC. Yes. So... So grab your crafting and uh, join us. Moba chat. <laughs> what? I think go. And go. So yeah. Works in progress. Mojo. Oh, gets over mojo. <laughs> you have a lot too on the list. Yeah, a little tired. So, mojo. Do you have any finished objects? Oh. Yes. Um, okay. I did a few squares for Quidditch, which I thought ended tonight, but it's tomorrow, the 29th. Um, so there's like a granny square. I used a star nets pattern for a basic granny. I hear it's a wonderful pattern. It is. Um, there's one. And that those ends are woven in and then this one I like did myself it kind of needs some blocking it is a square I started with a circle and I kind of did it myself I think it'll work okay it is they're like eight by eight and there's another one so I have three so far um I have to weave the ends in but I'll be donating those to uh, the Slytherin baby shower thing, um, where you, where you send them off, and they will make baby blankets for new babies. Um, and that'll be for Quidditch. And then I also finished uh, my Mara shawl. Um, it is quite ginormous, and I need to wash it still. It smells like campfire. <laughs> That's crazy huge. It really is. But it's awesome. And I made it, if you remember, I, I increased on every row so the wings are very long. Mm -hmm. um, so that I could, I put it over and then I cross it and tie it behind my back. And it's way awesome. And it, like, is insanely warm. Like, just having that on you, like, keeps you warm. It's crazy. I love it. That's why they make them. Huh? And that's it, I think. Let me look at my notes. Cool. I'm super, like, tired, so don't mind me. Okay. Yes, that's it for me. Well, I've got five granny squares that are also turned in because I'm awesome. Boom. Yeah. Oh, I turned in my Mara shawl. Well, that's cool. Go me. So I also did a basic traditional granny square. I Ooh. ran out of the purple, so I did a row. Of well, I up. like that. But what size hook do you use? Because yours looks more tight, like. Um, I used an F just because that was the only one that I had in my notion bag. Oh, okay. And like going and looking for the. F. I have an H. Yeah, I just use sound that. okay. Yeah, I just don't crochet that much, so I I don't know. I'm and not then as. Like, I was working on them. This one. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. From the 200 crochet blocks, and then I did this one. This one is called the Edwardian Fancy one. This one was called Prep. So Plus. that's this next one, and I'm trying to just use up all my ends. Let's say those are like crazy complicated looking. And this, I know I'm special like that. This one was um, the Danish square. Okay. It's a little wonky. It's not my favorite. And then this one was called the chain stitch square. Um, I saw Fosterson had made one. He had it in the um, the Slytherin baby thread, okay. baby blanket thread. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. What pattern is that? And he linked it to me, so I thought I'd make it. And this one, 
it's not like your traditional square where you join every round. It's a constant um, spiral. Spiral. So if you look, it looks it looks square. It looks kind of wonky, like a wonky square. But it's pretty cool. But it took forever because it's all like single crochet like in these ones you know there's like double crochet and I added like they were supposed to end down here and I added rows to make them eight by eight, make them eight inches so but those are the only um finished objects I have okay so next up is works in progress so besides the crochet square you're working on <laughs> anything else that's what I'm doing <laughs> Um, I would really like to say that I started my owl. You still have it? I've looked at the yarn, and I've looked at numbers. That's about it. What's your 50% mark? I don't even know. You had to tell them when you signed up. I know, I but I don't remember right now. That was like a month ago. <laughs> um, no, I am going to get crack on on it tomorrow. My head was so I wasn't able to think and like to have to write down a pattern. I just wasn't. Blah. I think I have to have a half of the thing knit and like the chart and basic pattern written out. So. How do you write patterns? Do you write them down first and then knit them? Or no. do you knit them and write them as you knit them? I knit and write. Yeah, so get going. I know. I think what's throwing me up is I've never really knit with DK that much and like my whole cast. I want to go and look at that book by, who is the book with the percentage or like, I think you have it. Where it's a book and it has like, if you have this gauge. Yeah. You yeah. Uh, sweater. The Amazing Patterns by Ann Butt. Yes. Or I'm going to go look at that book tomorrow at the yarn shop. I think the numbers are just messing with me. I don't know. My, my head, I've just not been good lately. Well, I, I can tell you this. You take your gauge and however many stitches you have, multiply that by how many inches you want it and you're good to go. I know that. Well, that's a starting point. But the whole, because I'm casting on, I'm going top down, like to make sure it fits over the head. But then if you do it, I don't know. I. Yeah. It'll be okay. I'll well, get it done. This woman has stuff too, like the, her percentage sweater. Yeah, I've looked at that. Okay. Anyways. Your job tomorrow is to get cracking and at least start knitting it. Okay? I had the needles. I took them off. I had them around my neck today, and well, I got the yarn out. Well, that's a step in the right direction. It was. You take it upstairs and leave it on the counter so that you see it. And every time you walk past it, you'll say, oh, I need to start that. <laughs> I was okay. going to. I might actually do it tonight. Did you start anything else? Not knitting or crocheting. Okay. My turn? Yes. I am still working on my owl. I started on um, the thumb. I'm going to try it on for you and show it to you. So. That's pretty awesome. I can go a little bit, a few more rows, and then I'll start decreasing. You're almost at 50%, right? Yeah, that would be 50%. Do you have to have the pattern written for that? No. Just the chart when I turn it in, but okay. I already have the chart. But like I said, I'm going to do a different one for the other one. Do you think that's weird having two different mittens? Not if you're cool with rocking it that way. I think it's fine. And I am cool because it's going to be a poem about sheep. I just have to look up the poem. I was going to say, what's it going to say? I don't know. Probably blah, blah, black sheep. Have you any wool? Yes or yes or do you bags wool? One, one for the... Or if I can find a cooler sheep poem, I might do that. You could write a sheep poem. That's in my Dr. Who bag. I see it. That I made for myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And the 26th 
we could start our order missions. Yeah. And I started mine yesterday. So this is all the farther I It's a top down. I'm knitting Idlewood. And um, like that. See that? Turning it's fun. Yeah. Now. How's the gauge going? This is my pattern. Can you see the little pencil marks? You probably can't. No. I had to math it a little bit because the gauge they wanted was for like a bulkier yarn and I've said this many times before bulky yarn does not look good on bulky people and so um, I spun like um, a 10 or 11 wraps per inch uh, between 10 and 12 wraps per inch which is about worsted around Aaron. Maybe DK. So, um, I had to do a little bit of math, which is not a problem. I just did a math and it only changed the numbers a little bit. But I have, um, eight of the n nine, seven, seven of the mashups, <laughs> um, spun already and I have the yardage I need for the pattern so the last two fall uh mashups mash -ups, <laughs> I will just be extra yardage which is good because since I had to math it I need the yard extra, a little bit of extra yardage yeah so that's what I've been doing knitting on that but then I was thinking tortoise sock starts on the first yeah and on the first I want to turn in I want to clear socks off my needle so I can go. You know? Right. But do so you I have for detention, on. you mean? Yeah. Do you have some ready? I have those green ones from the last sort of sock. Oh, okay. That I need to finish. Like they were stage four or something. Brave, I think they're called. Yeah, those I don't think I even started. Well, those are the ones I stopped because Torfee started. So, I want to finish those. I only have like a little bit more left on those to turn in for... I should work on them and get them to like the ribbing and then just do the ribbing on the first and then start the new socks for Torfee socks. You should. Right? Yeah. I have to you better do that because otherwise you're just going to rip them off the needles and use the needles. No, because I bought extra needles. Oh, okay. I was like, because I, I wouldn't want to have to wait and finish socks so I can start socks. Yeah, no, I bought some Chiago needles to oh, that's right. um, work on. I just have to remember where I put them. Yeah, I should look for those. But that's all I'm working on. Okay. You spin me right round. Baby right round. I can go because I'm already talking about it. So I finished a skein of yarn that I'm knitting with. Um, it was the number one mashup and it turned out really nice. I'll hold the ball up for you to look at. It's very green and blue. Yeah. And it was half of night sky and half of blue sky. And it turned out really nice. And I turned it in for divination. Is that the one where if you're fanatical about something? I think maybe. I just turned it in today, I should remember. But I turned it in and that was my sixth class. And I turned it in and I'm done. That's awesome. Yeah. So then I also, as we're packed, and I got 199.95 yards at 11 wraps per inch. Which, when I looked it up on my ice fit toolkit, it said 10, 8 to 10 was Aaron, and then 10 to 14 is worsted. So it's right around there. Wraps per inch, that's what it said. Um, but as we were packing, I. Um, was organizing my stash a little bit, so I took pictures of some stuff that wasn't in my stash, and I put them in my, my stash on oh, Apple. Yeah. 
That's awesome. And last week, whenever I forgot to talk about it, so I thought I'd talk about it today. So just a few things, like things I got for my club or the things I got at Maryland Sheep and Wool or just stuff that I had gotten and not taken pictures of. <laughs> they now have pictures. That's good. I have a, a box that I need to do that to. That's cool. I, it, it, surprisingly, it was only like maybe 12 things, which isn't bad. And then you know how I started watching that Suffolk fleece? It's actually dry. Awesome. So I have to put that back in the bag and put it in a Suffolk container and put it in the basement. Very cool. I actually think I need to get another Tupperware container, though. <laughs> and then I have another place I want to wash just because I want to store them clean right yeah it's better to get the lanolin out plus then I don't have to worry about like moths or anything if it's clean I know like lamb trap just got one I know and you know I was reading and they say anything uh, like um lavender or even rosemary those smelly, like stronger smelling herbs like that are good for um, keeping moths away. So, you know, so if you have like rosemary in your garden, cut some, dry it, and then put it in a little sachet bag and throw it in with your fire. Very cool. So that's all I've spun in. All right. Um, I spun up. The Masham. Oh. Um, Ooh, it's a long wool. It's got it's got like a really long staple. Um, so I kind of did like a modify it. I didn't do long draw, but I like I don't know. It's kind of I didn't try and smooth it out. Um, I got about two hundred and nine yards, I believe. How did you like spinning it? That was a new fiber for you, right? Yes, it was a new fiber. It was nice. It's not as soft or springy as, you know, like a Paul Worth or Merino or, you know, anything like that. But um, it's, it's like, surprisingly nice. Like, it's soft in a different way. I don't know if that makes sense. It doesn't. <laughs> it's, like, almost, like, silky. It's, it has, like, a sheen to it, and it kind of reminds me a little bit, like, of um, BFL, but a lot longer staple. Oh, okay. It looks, it seems like it'd be like a hard wearing, like I wish I would have thought about it a little more and spun this, a single of this and like plied it with something else and made socks out of it. Like it seems like that would be cool. Um, cause it seems like it would be strong. Um, but this actually will go for our club along because this was my first ever, I believe, club fiber. Cool. What club? Um, Younger Yarn, her Fiber of the Month Club, um, which was cool because you got all different kinds of fibers to try out, um, and I finally tried this one out. Um, but yeah, it's a little hairy. I don't know if you can. Yeah, I can see see the fuzziness of it, but I don't know. It's I don't know what I'll make with it because I don't think I want to put it on my skin. Um. But yeah, it was fun to spin. I did it on my antique spinning wheel too. That's cool. Um, yes and no. I only have one bobbin for it, and the bobbin is tiny. Um, so I had to like take it off and ball it up. Um, you should have had Joe whittle you a new bobbin. Yeah. Um, but no, it was it was fun to do it, and <laughs> turned out nice and everything. I don't know what I'll make with it yet. And then I didn't bring it in here because I'm in the middle of plying it, but the um, Australian Merino that I'm spinning, super thin. I finished the singles, excuse me, and I started plying it, Yay. Navajo plying it from both ends, which let me tell you is a pain in the butt, like a lot. I started it last night and I got like, yeah. It's kind of difficult, but it's looking cool. I couldn't bring it in here because I didn't want to take it off 
Um, and think of all the bonus points for garbage. Right. So I'm excited to see it. Um, but it's turning out way cool. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll make like a slouchy hat or something with it because it's like super round and soft mm. and bouncy. Cool. I'm excited. I'll probably finish playing it tonight. Next month. That's one of my projects. It's fun. Um, I don't know if I'll ever do it again, <laughs> but no. It's not too bad. I actually, I put it back in um, my little bucket bag that I have for for that, and that actually, like, because I think the, the end that comes off the outside, it gets too loose, and when you're Navajo applying, you don't have a hand to, like, be able to control that, because you're Navajo applying. Um, so having it in that bucket bag created a little bit of tension around it, so I think that was helping a little bit more. Smart. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. I wish I could show you, but I don't have it. Next week. Oh, and I also started up one more mashup on my shot. Matchless. Cool. But that's upstairs, and I also didn't bring it down. But I seriously, like, spun, like, three yards. <laughs> I just started it this, this afternoon. Is that for your catalog? Um, no, it's just for my giant mashup. Oh, okay. And it'll be my last class when I finish those two spins. But yeah, but I handed in four classes today, thanks to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad that I helped you. You did. Um, and then I felt so stupid, um, you know, for Defense Against the Dark Arts, mm -hmm. how it's the one with the Patronus, but like we were doing the one, the yarn to hang on a hook. Yeah. Well, I did. I spun my llama for that class, and I forgot to take a picture of it hanging on a hook. So I'm like, ah, and I like knit with all of it, except for some like leftovers. So I put the leftovers on a hook. I mean, I hung it on a hook when I like dried it. Um, so I hope they'll be okay with that. I'm sure. We'll see. Um, but that's it, I think, for my spinning. Yep, yep. Okay. On Next. to sewing. I haven't been sewing. It's on my to-do list for tomorrow because I've been cleaning and stuff. Painting. The paints and fabric don't really go together. No. But I did get some Captain America fabric that I need to sew. That is all. You're up. Um, I just finished, like, because I think last week I talked about, um, I was making all the stuff for Rendezvous, so I finished it. <laughs> That's about it. I, I saw those pictures, so the shirts looked really nice. Yeah. Did they, did they fit all right and everything? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. It worked. It's cool. It I closed cool. my family. <laughs> They're not going to go cold when the zombie apocalypse happens. It's, yeah. Uh, so. All right. So, cool. Okay, next up is Jim. So... Um, I started on week two. Woo, how'd it go? To 5K, and I feel like I'm back at square one. Because <laughs> I'm like running for six, for nine, 60 seconds, I got used to it, and I was doing okay, and I could do them all. And then this one, I was like dying. Because 90 seconds and 60 seconds, that's a big difference. And then my shin started hurting, mm -hmm. so I think I'm going to buy some rock tape. Okay. The tape my shins because I think really it's just because my calves are so big that they're pulling on the muscles and messing up because I'm running on my toes not my toes but I'm running on the balls of my foot so, right or landing on the balls of my foot but um, today it was raining so I did some cardio knitting I did not work out yesterday because it was Memorial Day and I was lazy so we'll see if I'll, I'll run tomorrow. I'm, I'm kind of taking it easy because even though I haven't run the whole weekend, my shins are still a little sore. So yeah, don't mess with them. 
Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna, I might just do cardio knitting this week because I don't want to mess myself up. But that's it. Um, I feel like kind of bad, but I've been super busy. So we last podcasted last Tuesday and then Wednesday was my last day to get ready before we left and so I was sewing all day long and I was gonna run that day on Wednesday because it was a run day but it was like rainy like completely rainy out so I didn't and then we were gone from Thursday to Sunday and then yesterday it was like cold and rainy and I was like still exhausted from our trip and then today it was rainy so I cardio it today but I didn't like feel like I didn't do anything for a whole week I kind of feel guilty. But we were outside and like walking around, you know what I mean, doing stuff. So, I don't know. I kind of feel like I failed, but not, I don't know. Um, Any movement is good movement. True. And I, I did my cardio knitting, or crocheting today, so. Excuse me. Okay. That's it. I'm hoping I can run tomorrow. Okay. Random or randomness? Do you want to talk about Um, sure. It was fun. <laughs> um, so basically, like, you know, early 1800s, um, we... I took a ton of pictures, so if you're friends with me on Google or Facebook or even Instagram, I put some up on there. Um, you can check out the pictures. Um, what are you laughing at? My uh, uh, computer is just Oh, okay. I thought you were laughing at me. Um, yeah. But it was it was just really fun. So like we set up these canvas tents, you know, time period tents. And, um, we didn't have them, so we, like, stayed at Joe's sister's house. Um, and the first night we camped out in her backyard in a tent. But it was, like, freezing. And we realized we're not, we weren't as prepared as, like, other people who had, like, thick thome, thome, foam pads. Um, for like under them all we had was like a sleeping bag and a blanket like we were a frozen and like half on a slant like so I had our heads up on the top of the slant and like like during the middle of the night we we're like halfway on the other side of the tent it was horrible and like miserable and my hips hurt every time I move I like woke up every half hour to hour it was bad um so yeah, we'll want to get some like foam pads or something if we do it again. <laughs> Are you allowed to use foam pads? Really yeah, as long as you have them hidden. Like some people have like cots that are like nicer than their beds. They like rough it, but don't rough it. Um. So anyways, so then we slept inside her apartment the next two days, um, but we were all crammed in one room. Um, so it was like hot and stuffy and then like Trubin was like all up in my space and I still didn't get a good sleep. That's probably why I'm exhausted. And then being outside, like all like day. we seriously got up at five or six AM. Well. And like didn't go to, and then like we went to bed at ten, which is early for me because I'm usually a night owl, but like we all just crashed hard each night. Like being outside all day long is tiring. I mean it really is like no wonder people went to bed early <laughs> like besides not being able to speak but you know <laughs> but um but no i mean it was really cool and interesting and there's lots of neat things to do um they had like tomahawk throwing thing there and like a competition and stuff um so I was in the women's one. I didn't win anything because that was like the first time I ever did that. Um, but then there was a frying pan toss. And uh, oh, Katie got first place and I got third place for throwing a cast iron pan. <laughs> Were you throwing it at something? What? At someone? At something. Oh, no. Just like through the 
like the grass, <laughs> like throw it as far as you can, and then they put like a stick in, um, and then, uh, I don't know, I mean we hung out around the campfire and cooked over the fire, and um, I spun, like they had, Friday was school days, and they had about a thousand kids over the course from eight to like three come in for a field trip and stuff, so that's when I spun most of my yarn. And I kind of like demonstrated and answered some questions and stuff. Um, cool. But yeah, it was cool. And then on Saturday, it was just open to the public. So like, you know, people just came in. Um, but it was fun. I have a list of things I want to make and do for next year. And like Joe really liked it and the kids had a blast. And okay. It was just a really nice family vacation. So. It was like camping, but then with a bunch of people who are like doing the same thing as you and... What? Other people watching you do it. Yeah, that too. But it, it was fun. It was good. We all enjoyed it, so it was good. And like, it was like, like I don't wear skirts normally, right? But it was so comfortable not to have constricting pants on, like the whole time. Like... I had these big floofy skirts on, right? It was just really comfy and you could like do whatever. It was great. Um, Chloe loved having an apron. Hers was like so filthy by the end of the weekend. <laughs> like it was like covered in like nastiness. I'm like, maybe I should make one for you at home so you can wear an apron all the time and like wipe your hands and face on it. <sighs> but uh I don't know. It was fun. It was good. Anything else? Um, oh, I actually, I didn't write this down, but I got some club yarn while I was away from Alina Shea Creations. Um, it's in the Crescent Moon uh, base. It's 100 percent superwash merino 400 yards in mom's uh gladiola i think that's what it says it's just a nice red semi-solid which i think is going to be perfect for uh tour de sock yeah which is awesome because i don't have any red socks and then i got a cute little um stone gem necklace thing i don't know my hand is like the same color as it Mm hmm but um speaking of tour to sock I need to get beads for the first socks you only need 50 for the first one I know but I need to get them <laughs> so maybe I'll do this and go get some pretty beads okay I hope that one's not to last. I agree. I, <laughs> I need to at least make two for my order mission. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh. I don't know. Well, I was thinking for the one that you need, like, a bunch of different colors. Yeah. I was going to um, use the Alina Shades Creation I Love Hogwarts, or whichever one has all eight colors of okay. all the houses. And then I was going to get some gray yarn for that. That would so. be cool. Then I, I forget how many colors you actually need. Yeah. Wow. I have, I was in like a, like a, it wasn't a club, but it was like a swap where you bought a skein of yarn, yarn from her and like mini skeined them up and sent them. And then you all, like I have a bunch of, I think they're semi-solid colors from her. I might do that too. For that. If it's, in one of the first three socks. <laughs> yeah. Cause then I'm out. I'm not crossing anything past the third sock either. Okay. Third thing is over 
I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's kind of boring. Okay, that's right. So, are you going to tell everyone to buy fat? Because this one was the secure box, and I got my box. So, I know you've done fat fiber before, but some of the people who watch might not. So, if you ever get a chance to get a fat fiber sample box, it's like a box where different um, Etsy stores or different online independent sellers they send in samples, and um, you bu you buy a box. And then you get to sample all their stuff. And they usually have coupon codes and different stuff going on. So I got my box. Sometimes there's patterns in there. And this one, there's a really cool slouchy hat pattern by uh, Gary Lynn. So um, it's really cool. So that was in there. And then, um, you can see, I, I did the little zero dish marker. But then someone did a uh, cheap superhero stitch markers. I just love them. Like, I know like some people don't like fancy stitch markers, but I love them. But look at this one. It's a sheep. And it's a superhero. That's awesome. That is by um, Confenso on Etsy. And then, you know, like I got, you know, like all the different samples. Like there's all, all these mini stains of yarn. And like there's that one, that's Wonder Woman. Um, you know, so it's just a lot of fun to like go through it all and see all the samples mm -hmm. of different stuff. Like here's another stitch marker, it's a dice. And then this person um, sent a local fleece because she just like a part of a sheet, basically. And then there's other ones like, you know, different bats. This one I liked. It came in this uh, ninja turtle bag. <laughs> and then it's uh, a ninja turtle. Look at how much it looks like a ninja turtle. That's awesome. Is that orange or red? It's, it's red. Oh. This was uh, the Lady Lama Fiber Com Company. And then um, like this one has like a sparkly bat. It kind of looks like um, this one's Super Grover. That's awesome. I know. And then, like, there's, like, some Paul Worth. Now, I like to use all of these, and this one is um, the Hulk Smash. <laughs> and then there's, like, other ones. It's just a lot of fun to go through and, like, see I have more, more little mini skeins to go in my mini skein bases. To go through and sample all this stuff. And then they usually, the stores will have, like, larger versions. So if there's something that you totally love, you can go get the big version, um, which I thought was cool. I think it's cool. And it's just like a way to sample different stuff and try out different things. And I think that fat fiber is really cool. So I wanted to share my box with you guys. Now you can win um, a super box, which is the box that when they show you the video, because if you go to the fat fiber blogspot.com they do like a video of what's going to be in the box so you can see and everything that's in that video they put in the super box it's called and you can um, enter to win it if you buy from anyone on the list of fat fiber you can be entered in to win that any item that you buy not a purchase but an item so if you bought like three bags from me each bag would be an entry or if you bought like two different bats from um one of the participating shops in the box, you could enter in twice for each bat, stuff like that. Um, and then you also get a $150 gift certificate to one of the shops. That's um, awesome. To win, so it's worth it. I mean, if you're gonna be buying, you might as well look at the list and see if they have something for you. Um, so Definitely. that, totally awesome. Oh, and then today I was, or yesterday, um, was Memorial Day, so we did, like, the whole, we went over to Andy's parents and did the whole, um, grilling out and stuff, and then we came home, and then we decided we wanted to go see, um, 
epic, that movie epic, because they had it at the dinner in a movie place. So we took the girls and we went up there to the dinner in a movie and watched that movie epic. It's like a, a, um, a kid's cartoon. I couldn't think of what it was called, a cartoon. But it was really cute. I liked it. You know, and the girls loved it because we, you know, it's like the novelty of eating, like sitting at a movie theater and having like a, a table in front of you and eating. Yeah, that's going to be cool. They just like pay attention more. So, yeah. So we went and saw that and it was a lot of fun. But I was looking on Instagram and I got, you know, like Instagram, if someone asks you, they, uh... At you. <laughs> well, what else are you going to call it? I, so, I call it ear burning. Well, yeah. But, um, Sock Buddy... At you. <laughs> she, she added me, because she, uh, called... <laughs> she had bought one of my Star Trek bags, and she, she had, um... One of the screenshots that it, it picked was her holding up the bag when she was talking about it. So I was like, oh, I'll watch it tomorrow. So while I was cardio knitting today, I watched her podcast. And it was kind of cool seeing her how excited she was about getting the bag. So that was cool. That's awesome. Uh, and then um, I made, for Madison School, they're doing like a... Um, okay. Her school is a cyber school, and they have learning centers where you can take your kids, like, if they need help with school and you can't provide that help, they have, like, teachers who uh, will help them. But you can also take your kid there if you just want them to, you know, have friends that also are in the same school as them, if that makes sense. Because it's kind of like homeschooling, but not homeschooling, it's cyber schooling. Yeah. So, um, we take the girls... Um, like once a, once a week, actually it ends up being Wednesdays and Thursdays, so twice a week, just so that they can meet other kids their age, um, and just kind of like do school, you know, and also so I can get stuff done around the house, and so I can have a break, basically, is what we mean. <laughs> that's like the main reason, but, um, hey. <laughs> Um, which, you know, it's some people who are, like, hardcore homeschoolers are like, that's so, so wrong, but whatever, I don't care. Whatever. So, I see, uh, so we take them, like, twice a week. So, they, they're, they're it's called, it's called the Eagles View Learning Center. So, they take, we take them there, but they're doing, like, a, um, there's a community days in where the, the town that it's in, and they're going to have a table to talk about the, the school and the learning center, and they wanted a basket to raffle off. They wanted people to volunteer. So I volunteered to make one, and I made one. And it's totally awesome, if I can say so myself. So I got this, like, sand kit from Walmart. I was wanting, like, a bucket. But I couldn't find a bucket, so I found the sand kit. And then I got, like, a Frisbee, some water bottles, and then, like, sunscreen. And I put chalk in there, and more sunscreen, and then sunglasses and after sun lotion <laughs> and then there's also um goggles and then That's i packed cool. it up in shrink wrap and as i was like, shrink wrapping it i was like can you shrink wrap medicine can I <laughs> and i was like no you can't shrink wrap a person <laughs> can i shrink wrap can i do it and i'm like no because i want to you know it to be to look nice <laughs> and then she was like, why are you shrink wrapping the top? I'm like, because you need to leave that so it's fluffy and you can hold it by that. She's like, well, can we wrap Madison up and shrink wrap her? I'm like, no. <laughs> and she was just like, I was like, Bella, you can't shrink wrap people. You could was, try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but she was like amazed that, you know, you it was all like fluffy and then you, blow, you put the blow dryer on it and it shrinks. That's funny. So, but I'm going to take that tomorrow when I take the girls. So I think it's a cool basket. It Would is. you want to buy it? It's very summery and awesome. Well, I had thought maybe I would do like a knitted one, but then I'm like, it's summer. I'll just do a summer thing. Wow. Trucking but, along. <laughs> Sorry. But that's all the randomness I have. Cool. Oh, besides 
I painted the girls' room. Remember we talked about that last week? Mm-hmm. Their room is done. And I cleaned up the kitchen. I cleaned off the fridge. There's no papers on the fridge anymore. It looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I keep walking by it, and I'm like, whoa. Because <laughs> normally we have, like, color, color papers and stupid crap yeah. up there. So we got rid of it. Or I got rid of it. And I also pulled the, the fridge out. And clean underneath it. That was disgusting. But it's cool. And I packed up some stuff, like extra stuff that we, you know, don't need. And I, I have like a huge box that I'm taking to Goodwill and stuff like Tupperware containers and other stuff that we just don't use. Yeah. And like different mugs and stuff. So That's I have awesome. to clean the kitchen and then I have to paint the kitchen. And then I was hoping not to have to paint the living room. But today as I was cleaning cleaning I noticed like handprints like all like not adult hand area but child hand area so it's like down lower like and I was like you can't just paint half of a wall can you wash it off does it wash well we have these super walls that are textured hmm. so the hard thing this is why I'm so sick of painting is because we can't use a, a roller because it doesn't get in all the cracks because it's, like, textured, like, swooshy. And so you have to use a freaking paintbrush, and that is not fun. For the whole wall. So <laughs> well, I need two bedrooms with a paintbrush. A wide one, but still, with a paintbrush. They make some rollers that are more fluffy that get in. They don't work that well. But I think because the living room is already white, and yeah. we're just going to paint white over it, I might just try it. Yeah. But see, like, for our room, we were painting over green. <laughs> and for the girls' room, we were painting over hot pink. Don't ever, ever paint a room hot pink. That was horrible. <laughs> That's, oh. so. That's funny. Yeah. But the, the kitchen, I'm going to leave blue. I'm just going to touch up the kitchen so it looks fresh. Yeah. Very cool. You're doing a lot. Yeah, I had like if if I turned the camera around, there's like boxes all over there and over there that we were gonna take to the um, storage place to store our roots. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I'm gonna pack up all my cookbooks. I think. All your what? Cookbooks. Okay. I'm gonna go through some because really some of them I don't use. I go through. It's fun. And then uh, I'm calling the realtor hopefully on Friday. Very cool. Yeah, I'm kind of. I've never seen the house before. Never. This is our first house we've seen. Yeah. Stressful. Exciting. I know I need to finish cleaning all the wool because I have like a bag of unproven wool upstairs waiting. And I have a bag over there that's drying. It's just drying out. It's been drying out for days. Alright. That's it. I'm just talking now. So, should we talk about our club along again? So, if you have a club that you're in, or that you have been in ever, and you got yarn or fiber or whatever, and you have not used it, you may use it and join our club along at um, any time. Whole club. Just join in. Okay. What? You don't have to use the whole club, just part of it. Yeah, just a part of it. Um, like my Masham, that's for our club along. Um, and there's a lot of people talking in there. I have not been in there because I've been crazy busy, but I think it's awesome that people are um, chatting away. It's great. We so, actually have to finish off We do. They're really amazing. Oh, I was going to say, um, and maybe we'll, I'll tell the people that have already done it, but put up one post for each finished object. I know some people have a, a post and they have a couple different finished objects. Have one per. Right? Yeah. Because we'll random number generate prizes from that um so that's it 
I know. Next yeah. podcast is 73. It's exciting. We are. We're going to have a big party. Yeah. And we'll randomly draw names from the thing we have one week. Not even because it's going to be bad that we're taping. Yeah, we're going to do it early. I feel bad to to enter in the contest. For the four different prizes. The bag. The yarn. The yarn. And the yarn. <laughs> Fun and then some yeah. Um, so join in. Tell your friends. Join in. And what it is to tell your friends tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Which is cool. So I hope that's working. So if you're new, hi. And I hope you enjoyed us. <laughs> and that you stayed as long. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of this podcast. We forget. We're, like, not new at this, but I still forget. Um, but, yeah. So, I think that's it. You Thanks can find us at the Weasley Sisters Podcast.com. No. Okay. .wordpress.com. And on our Ravelry group. The Weasley Sisters Podcast. Yes. And wherever else, too. You know, Google and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, we don't have a group. But us individually are there. Yeah. So find us, friend us, have a good week, and we'll see you Saturday. next month, the 1st of June. Yeah. Bye. Bye.